Hey, Rebecca. Hi, Jason. Thank you. Yeah, they, uh, for whatever reason, it's not letting everybody in all at once. It's taking its time. Okay. Oh, here's. Guys, one here. Hi, Rick. Hi, how you doing? Good. Um, I'm just seeing who's on the call. It looks like we have the Pippins. Alan here, Kurt's here, Ruth is here. Um, Peg is here, and then Rick is here. So Peg looks like she's getting connected now to audio. So Peg, are you good? Can you hear us? I'm sorry, was that to me, Rebecca? Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that you were on and you could hear everybody. Finally. <laughs> okay. Sorry. It sounds good. Then we will get started. I will call this meeting to order. It is 7.02. Uh, let me just rearrange my screen here. Um, we do have a quorum, and Jamie is not able to make it tonight. Um, so we can stand for the pledge. Turn the camera to the flag. Oh, no. <laughs> <That way. laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, of liberty and justice for all. All right. Um, any added agenda items? We do have one. Um, so we're just going to go under new applications be seized as number three for application 15-2020 for White House Point Fire Department. Um, do I have a motion to add that to our agenda? So I'm going to make a motion. Okay. Uh, add that to our agenda. Okay. Rick makes the motion. Pippin, I heard a second. I heard somebody else in there. <laughs> that was me. Okay. Did you have anything to add to that, Ruth? Um, I did have a couple other items. I didn't know if you wanted it in that motion. Um, uh, let's do, we can do one at a time. time. So okay. all in favor for new applications to be received, number three for the fire department. Um, I don't have to be on here. Pippins, are you good? Yeah. Rick? Yes. Uh, Alan? Yes. And Kurt? Are you there? Because you're muted, if, if you are. <laughs> okay, well, we have majority. So that is added to the agenda. And then, Ruth, what else do we have to be added tonight? I have a couple items under uh, violations or enforcement that I wanted okay. to add. Um, do you want the addresses of those or just the fact that there's a couple additional items? Um, let's just get the addresses for those. So okay. what's the one, first one you have? Eight Craftsman Road. And the second one is um, 222 through 232 South Main Street. Okay. What, what did I miss, Rebecca? Um, that we're adding a new application to be received, item number three for the Warehouse Point Fire Department. Okay. Um, okay, Ruth, was that all that you had for those two? For enforcement ag items, yes. And then we just okay. had an, a, a correspondence, correspondence I wanted to add. Yeah, we don't have to usually add those to the agenda. You okay. Say okay. those and those come up. Um, so do I have a motion to add the two violations onto our agenda? One for 8 Craftsman Road and the second for 222 uh, through 232 South Main Street? Uh, motion. Six motions. Is there a second? Second. Six Rick. seconds. Any discussion? All of those in favor? Aye. 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 And Alex. Alan, are you an I? I was. Hi. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay. We'll 
things are in there then. So, um, if we have no further agenda items, we can move on to approval of the meeting minutes from October 7th of 2020. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of the regular meeting Wednesday, October 7th, 2020. Second. Seconds. Are there any discussion or corrections? Hearing none, all of those in favor? Aye. 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 And, yep. All right, I think I heard everybody in there. So, all set. Um, I know that we have people from the North Light Energy. Um, I was going to see if they were on the call, if we could take them out of order so they don't need to wait. They are on. Okay. Um, I would enter I would entertain a motion to go out of order and take miscellaneous one. Uh, so moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Alan? Sure. All right. So who do we have to have an informal discussion um, for an update? Um, it looks like Aaron. I'm going to butcher your last name. So, Aaron, take the floor away. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Aaron Svedlow, and I'm with North Light Energy. We're developing the Gravel Pit Solar Project. Um, we also have Jonathan Gravel on the phone, and I believe we have Jeff Peterson. Not 100% on that. Um, Jeff is our wetland scientist. Um, I did have, I don't want to take up too much of your time. Um, you know, I mostly am here to answer any questions you have about the project. We do have some slides that I can kind of breeze through. They might be helpful just because they've got some visuals associated with them. Um, so I, I could share my screen if that's okay. Uh, yes, Jason would have to give you the capability of doing that. He's all set. Okay. Okay. Bear with me for one second. <laughs> hmm. Not letting me do it for some reason. Um, Give me one second, Aaron. Okay. Right now. Beautiful. Thank you. Awesome. Apologies. All right. Uh, good evening. Um, I think most folks have heard about this project. Um, you know, I can just give a brief overview of it for a little bit of a refresher. Um, so this is a 120 megawatt PV solar facility um, that we're proposing south of Apothecaries Hall Road, um, essentially down to and south of Plantation Road. Um, we're use, using about 485 acres. It's a split between 40, 45% gravel, uh, former gravel mine or active gravel mine, and then some tobacco fields south of there um, for the balance. Um, we'll be permanently closing the two gravel mines. Um, as I think Jason can attest to, there's substantial economic benefits to the town. Um, we really try to have a light touch during construction, so pretty minor grading. Um, you know, this is fairly low impact construction. Um, we're here to talk a little bit about wetlands because um, that's what you guys do. We've done a lot of uh, environmental work on the site, not just with wetlands, but a variety of other things, but you can see with this figure here, these are the wetlands and water courses that go through the property. So the Catch Brook area, um, you can see right through the middle here and the associated wetlands. Um, and then there's a few smaller wetlands up in the fields that are 
um, really of, of lower quality. And I'll, I'll let John talk about those in a minute. Um, but the important thing to note here, and I'm going to I'm going to go back to this slide um, where you can see the wetlands and the watercourses overlaid with the blue area, which is our array, our solar array. Um, there's only one wetland that we have any impacts to, um, and we won't be permanently altering that wetland. So John, why don't you take over and just talk a little bit about sort of that wetland in particular and generally our setbacks and how we're dealing with wetlands at the project. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Gotcha. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I'll, I'll give a high level. I think Jeff Peterson, you were able to join. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah, so I'll just kind of go high level. And then if you want to provide any specific details, please, please go ahead. But as Aaron was pointing out, you know, our, our facility is located um, primarily uh, to the vast majority on areas that are already pre-disturbed, whether they're agricultural or gravel pit areas. Um, there's a few locations where we need to clear trees for shading. Um, and some of those wetlands that are on the peripheral of our project will have some, you know, clearing up to or within. And those are very small wetlands in nature. Um, so you can see on the, on the map, um, there's a couple very small wetlands located along the perimeter. And so we'll be doing some clearing um, up to, and uh, we won't plan to really stump or grub. So really not disturbing um, the, the substrates of those wetlands, but we'll be kind of altering the vegetation slightly. And wetland 10, um, that is currently kind of impacted by ATVs, which you guys are probably aware of. There's a lot of AT, ATV activity. Um, in the Ketchbrook area and also throughout the gravel pits and the, and the tobacco fields. So wetland 10 is, is kind of created by hydrology that's perched from compaction um, and maybe actually gets its hydrology from drainage off the, off the landfill based on Jeff Peterson's report. But um, so those are, those are the, that's pretty much a high level of our wetland areas that we're up to or impacting. Um, but, you know, the high quality wetlands um, on this project we avoided and have a significant buffer from those. Thanks, John. Jeff, is there anything you wanted to add to that? Um, I guess the only thing I would say is, the, you know, the wetland in question that you're going to occupy with the array um, seems to have been formed after the closure of um, the landfill, um, the Botticella landfill or NORCAP landfill that's located to the east. We did a um, photo uh, chronology looking back in you know, 1963 uh, up to present. And it first appears um, in uh, about 2003 as the first aerial photograph where we actually see it. Um, it'd be interesting to see if either of the other permit applications showed this. I, I kind of doubt it. Um, Typically, uh, back in 63, when we looked at it, there was a tobacco barn in that vicinity. Um, and, you know, the old SCS Soil Conservation Service, before, uh, before the, uh, uh, it changed to the um, Natural Resources Conservation Service, they would typically give something like that a spot symbol in the field if it existed. It seems to be uh, an artifact from uh, both uh, the alteration of the watershed by placing a capped landfill with a sealed, you know, with a tight membrane um, upslope of it and vehicles traveling through it and compacting it. Um, th those are just my observations, but um, the criteria used to identify wetland doesn't look at origin. So that, that's why it's flagged. Hmm. Thank you, Jeff. And, and just to be clear, we, um, and John and Jeff, please, um, chime in if I'm misstating this, but the, the intent there is to leave that um, sort of potentially man-made wetland alone, but to, um, to have the array kind of go over it, um, which will require us to drive some, some piles um, either in the wetland or in areas near the wetland. But it, the function and value of the wetland will be retained. Is that correct, guys? Good mood. Oh, somebody's muted, John, if you're talking. 
<laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that, that's correct, Aaron. We're not proposing okay. to grade this area. Um, so it's one of these wetlands that, that it's my understanding that, you know, it's, it's wet part of the year and dry um, most of the year. Um, so it's one of those wetlands where it's, it's really devoid of vegetation mostly. So I think the building the array here and getting the ATV activity out of the area will allow it to actually vegetate and be, you know, more stable um, in the landscape. Excellent. Thanks. So I guess I would, I would pause there. Um, I've got a few other topics I was hoping to hit on with you guys if it's useful. Um, but maybe we could pause there if there's any questions about the, the general treatment of wetlands on the, the project or other questions about the project in general. Be happy to address them. Um, I think one of the only questions that I have, I think that I'm understanding from your map is that there's a stream going through that purple line kind of going north south. Um, are you guys going to be crossing over the river at all? And is there a bridge there to cross over, or are you not going to be going that way and coming in from plantation instead? Yeah, re really, really good question. Um, so if folks can see this map, the, the stream is the green area. It's actually a blue line within that green area um, going across sort of east, west, left to right across the map. The purple um, that goes north, south through the middle of it is actually, that's the railroad. Um, but you're exactly correct. We are going to be accessing the northern area, which is the, um, the active sand and gravel mine from um, the Apothecaries Hall Road area. There will be no um, vehicular connection between the northern and southern part of the project sites. We'll actually be boring, um, likely with the horizontal directional drill technique, our electrical cables underneath Catch Brook and the associated wetlands. So it'll come from an upland area on the south side of the project and pop up in an upland area on the, on the north side of Catch Brook. Um, and one of the reasons why we're doing that is um, for, for exactly why you pointed out, we don't want to have a bridge. Um, we don't want to have impacts to Catch Brook. Um, we actually want to improve the, the quality of Catch Brook and the associated wetlands by reducing that ATV traffic. But um, so we have, we have no proposed impacts in that area. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing I just wanted to point out too, I have the uh, 2019 state imagery on my other screen over here and it looks like the wetland that's on that um uh that's going to be impacted by the solar looks like it's like bounded by like stumps or trees or something um which i feel like is part of why that wet spot is there to begin with so hmm. i'm not too concerned about that in the project okay appreciate it any other um, questions so far Okay. Continue on. Well, <laughs> I'll go. I'll go on to, to the wildlife stuff um, just briefly, um, just so you guys know what we're up to out there. Um, and there's some interesting stuff in here. Um, we've got Jeff on the phone, who's done. His team's done all of this. I think he's spent more time out there than than probably anybody else, um, probably ever, frankly. <laughs> um, so we're, we're we've done bird surveys over the summer. Uh, last spring we did vernal pool studies. Um, looking for mammals, reptiles, um, also looking for host plants for Lepidoptera species, so, um, so moths and butterflies for, for state-listed Lepidoptera species. Um, some of these started last year, um, and then they all concluded um, this over the summer. One of the neat things that um, Jeff's team saw out in the field, if you can see the um, picture in the bottom left of this slide, um, if you look closely, there's a, a sea lamprey swimming. Uh, there's actually a couple of them swimming in the stream of Catch Brook there. And um, that, that was pretty unique uh, since it's quite far from the sea. So, um, you know, that makes Catch Brook even more interesting, I think, ecologically, um, and even more the reason for us to be, you know, very far away from there with the project. So I just wanted to highlight that. Um, we're continuing to work with DEEP um, and their natural diversity database team um, to sort of uh, implement and identify some 
you know, mitigation techniques and things we can do during construction in particular to just make sure that, you know, um, we don't have any undue adverse impacts on, you know, any turtles that might be walking through the site during construction. Um, you know, one of the things that we're contemplating is potentially doing some nest boxes um, for, for American Kestrel. Um, there's some time of year restrictions on when we can cut trees for bats. So we're paying very close attention to the wildlife stuff. Um, I won't go into too much detail here, but here's a picture of Catch Brook, and then there's a picture of the ATV trail that comes down to a, to a crossing in Catch Brook um, that'll be closed as part of the project. Um, and then just a general update. So we are in front of the siting council right now. Um, we are going to have a evidentiary hearing and public hearing on November 12th, uh, which is next week. Um, I believe Jason um, has all the information for that if you guys are interested in attending. Um, and then we're looking for the siting council to approve the project, you know, hopefully by January this year, or uh, sorry, January of next year. And then we would go into construction kind of um, late spring, early summer, maybe early fall next year, depending on how things shake out. Um, so I can send this slide deck around so folks sort of have it to peruse on their own time. Um, but I'll, I'll pause there and um, just see if you guys have any questions. Yeah, I was just curious that uh, the reports that you guys have produced uh, that you're going to need to give to the Siting Council, uh, those, can those be provided to the town as well? It's just uh, instructive for us to read through them and then, uh, you know, they give us an idea what might, what might be found on other parcels in the area? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we can provide them directly to you guys. They're also posted on the Siting Council's website under mm -hmm. docket 492, but I'll, we'll get them to, to you folks so you have them directly, um, at least the link, because the PDFs are kind of large. That's, yeah, that's all we need. That'd be great. Will do. Any other questions from members of the board? All right. Well, anything else, Aaron, from your team? No. Um, th thank you again for the time. We appreciate it. If there's any questions, if anybody wants to go out and see the property, you know, anything at all, just let us know and happy to accommodate and we'll, uh, we'll get you a link to those reports ASAP. Great. Thank you so much for taking the time to give us an update tonight. Yeah, thank you. And thanks for moving us around on the agenda. Appreciate that. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Cheers. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. All right. So let's have a motion to go back in order in our agenda. So I'll we'll make that a motion. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Our new application to receive number one is item 12 2020. Kevin Yansen, yep, I'm gonna mess that up. Kevin at 433 North Road, Access Road in construction of a small structure overlooking the Scanic River, H2 zone, map 107, block 26, lot 041. Kevin, I did see you on the line. I think I'm here. Yes, you are here. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so I know that you had talked to us at our last meeting. Um, you want to just give the group an update on anything that's changed? Uh, nothing's really changed. I'm, I'm looking to build, uh, you know, like a, a structure with uh, uh, a deck on it overlooking the river up on the, the ridge there and then clearing the, uh, the abandoned road along that along the ridge to get to it that starts at the pump station and then install a gate at the end of that roadway. So, you know, to eliminate traffic driving back there as best I can. And uh, the proposal is for laying some uh, like reclaimed gravel down or something over the surface. Um, I think there is a question is a few trees in the way down by the pump house and a few where I want to put up the building that are also uh, noted in the, uh, the application. 
And I think that's, that's about all I was proposing at, at this point. Um, I don't know if there's any questions or, or. Well, I could add that yes. know, all, all the work's happening in the upland area, um, none in the wetlands. The trees were gonna be cut flush and you yes. had identified three trees, right? Um, the construction of your shelter is um, by hand, right? No, yes. no heavy equipment is involved and you'll be on blocks or footings, correct? Yeah, I'm leaning towards blocks. So it would be on, on no excavation or anything. Okay. Um, and then the only other notable thing is I think you're um, in an escarpment soil area and so you'd have to take some care with um, the location of that structure and just make sure you're in a good solid spot. Oh yes, definitely. Yeah, based on the plan it looks like you're kind of like right in the middle on that flat spot back there. So that is correct. Uh, Rick Osborne here. I have a question. Okay. Uh, years ago, we approved a similar thing to this, and uh, it came back on us. He finally went in to build a house there and said he had wetland approval. So does this, if we approve this as a wetland approval, mm -hmm. could it be used as saying that he already had wetland approval and he wants to build a house on it. I would not believe that anything you gave me in regard to this would be construed as, as approval for a house. It's very narrow what I'm requesting. I, I know that, but I'm, I want, I want to know from, I, I want to know from somebody that of the town oh how they construe this rick when was something proposed for that i think that was definitely before my time so i'm gonna look yes it was it was Alan probably or, in the 80s yeah yeah i'll look to somebody else to maybe give their input if they remember that but i would say that that whatever application was approved back then it's clearly expired um so certainly nothing would be transferring over to no, not on that lot. This was on a different separate thing. I think. But this happened to us. They so went in later and said that they already had approval. They went to the zoning. They already had approval to build a lot on it, to build a house on it through the wetlands. I can offer that um, to build a house on the property, you'd need a zoning permit. And part of that process is determining whether or not there are wetlands on site. And so there's that due diligence and um, this recreational structure is a different activity. Um, the permit issued based on the facts if issued is the facts presented for that. And so if a house were to be built, it would be a different situation, a different permit. And uh, this and permit would not, would not be seen, right, this, this, because we are given an approval mm -hmm. to build a, a structure on this lot is what I'm getting at. So right, but it's based on the, the site plans that he has provided us. So we are accepting what he is showing us. So if anything differs from that, he'd have to come back to us. All right. And so, and the way we looked at it from zoning, I could offer that it was in support of recreational use of the property. Okay. The shelter is for that, to support that. Yeah, and that's why I was um, specifically asked to have a, a map drawn of exactly what we were approving and everything. Mm -hmm. So that all is in the file. And if somebody comes back and says they're only a house, we need a new plan. And, um, and then as far as like somebody decided to live there, well, that's, that's a zoning issue. But uh, as far as from a wetlands point, point of view, I, I think we're, Got it pretty well laid out exactly what we're approving. Uh, can I comment on that? Go ahead, Dick. Uh, 
why don't we just simply add one more condition to our normal conditions stating that this is not an approval for a residence or any permanent occupancy of any structure other than the recreational building. And that kind of puts it to bed once and for all when it's on the record. Sounds good. Yeah, we can definitely do that. That'll make it really clear. <laughs> can we do that? I mean, that's, that sounds like a, like a zoning condition. Yeah, of it almost seems like it's it, out of the wetlands purview. Perhaps it should be more in line with if any, any future construction to take place on the site would require a new permit. I think that's a separate permit. Yeah, I think we can state that, but I think that's kind of how the the ordinance is written for the wetlands anyway. So mm -hmm. if it's not on this plan, it's obviously not approved and you'd have to come back to us. Um, but it sounds like Kevin has zero intention of trying to live there and it's purposely for recreation. So I'm not I'm not too concerned about it with him. <laughs> we love it. You never know. <laughs> <clears throat> but yeah, I don't think we can. I don't think we can put a zoning condition in our wetlands yeah. permit. But yeah. maybe uh, we could do some sort of a condition. You know. But I think we already have. I mean, if we look through the conditions, it, you know, if there's any major alterations, it's got to come back. Yeah, I think that's already covered it in at least one, if not two, of the uh, standard conditions that are that are in there. So I don't think we need to add anything more. But certainly, if someone wants to, they can. I, my idea was not necessarily to impose a zoning condition, but just so that the wetlands approval doesn't get misconstrued, uh, go ahead and put your three-car garage and your 4,000 square foot McMansion on that site, because it really would look pretty up there. <laughs> it's kind of loud, but I, um, yeah, but I, I still, I think that we... That's, only, that's, you know, that's a zoning issue. We're strictly looking at, you know, wetlands, period. Right? And any, this, you know, we're approving this application that's in here, in front of us. So, what is it, a 16 by 16 building with a, with a deck, something like that? Um, yes. You know, so on blocks, I mean, all of that, none of that, like, you wouldn't get a CO for a house, you know? So, we're... I think it's pretty clear it's a recreational structure and and I don't, I don't think it needs any more conditions. Yeah, I don't I mean, and, and I just I just don't want to get in the habit of putting, I mean, if you can think of something, I guess, that, that, you, that you feel needs to be added that's specifically wetlands, then then that's one thing, but you can't, it, it's not enforceable. I mean, we could do what we want, but it would not be enforceable. Yeah, well, you wouldn't wouldn't be reinforcing it, Al. You'd be actually withdrawing the approval if they exceed the uh, requested or approved conditions. You, you, it wouldn't. I don't think it'd be zoning at all. Well, that's and that's the, that's the maybe maybe when we make the motion, we make it for the, specifically for the sixteen by sixteen recreational structure in the uh, in, in the approval. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, that way it nails it down. I, I can see where Rick comes from. When you, yeah. when you get burned, you kind of you kind of don't stick your hand back in the fire and try it again. And we don't want to hold him up and uh, drive him crazy on this thing. I, I'd be curious, actually. It's a good question, uh, not to get out uh, on the weeds, but uh, I know that in my camp in Vermont, there's a zoning for that area that, you know, you can't live there. Even if you, you, you know, even if you could build something, you can't live there. You know, you can only spend so many days a year there. So uh, I, I wonder if we have something like that in our zoning regs. So that I, I, think, I, think people. I think specifying in the approval, mm -hmm. like you say, I think that's a, that's a good workaround. I agree with that. I think that'll make everybody happy that's spoken their thoughts and feelings on that one. Um, are there any other? I have one quick question. Yep. Uh, are you a kayaker? Is this uh, some, some place where you would want to launch a kayak? Uh, I, I may get a kayak because there's a couple of places I might be able to launch it from down there, but not okay. easily. But you wouldn't be uh, building any structure to uh, 
launch it from? I, I can't. There's besides your approval and zoning approval, I have an easement with the town that says I can't build anything down there. Plus, I'm pretty sure I can't on the river. So there's, there's probably five things that prohibit me from building a dock down there. I would see to that that as a river commission, we have launched from that location before. So going in directly to the right of the pump station, there's what used to be a small tool, which I think fishermen use right now. Um, but basically, we just walked the kayaks and canoes in. Yes, it's definitely not a good spot, which is why we haven't used it in years. Um, but certainly, you're not going to prohibit anybody from doing that um, or from letting Kev do that on his own property. So. It has been done before in the past, so I don't think you need to build anything, but certainly you can still launch something. Oh, yes, you can, definitely can. I'm just saying I'm not planning on building a dock. Right. <laughs> yep. Any other questions? I have just one thought. There's been a lot of discussion um, about how a motion would be formed, what would be included in it. Um, the permit applications on the agenda to be accepted tonight, received tonight. And if a decision is going to be made, would it make sense to have it be an agent decision? I'm just thinking about the uh, need to have the 15 day period before acting. I, I would agree with that. I think we've seen this in informal discussion. It's a small owner project and, and certainly have gone over it pretty thoroughly. I, I would feel comfortable with letting you um, cover it from there. I would as well. Um, you can definitely see it right from the road. So certainly if something's not going to plan, somebody will probably notice it. I know a lot of us drive by there every day. so. We'll call you out, Kevin. <laughs> okay. If you see the McMansion. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it ought to be 15 by 16. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's a, a great point, Ruth. Um, anything else to add? We want to finish this up. We can. I, like it. I can make a motion real simple. We can take a. Application number 12, 2020, and make it an agent's decision. So moved. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a second to move the application 12 2020 to be received as an agent decision? Second. Alan seconds. Any further discussion? Rebecca asked 14 standard conditions or anything additional? Just the 14 standard conditions, I think, um, is what we said. And Are you asking 16 by 16? Um, I don't know if we're going to add the dimensions, but just make it that it was a uh, recreational structure. Is that right, Dick and Alan? That's yeah, well, I want to make it short. We, we could certainly add the normal conditions and the 16 by 16 to it, which is what he asked for. I don't think that'll hurt him any. I'll modify my motion. Thank you. I'll accept that modification. Great. Any further discussion? All of those in favor? Aye. Aye. Alan, I'll, abstain. I'll abstain. You'll abstain. Okay. Yeah. All right. Have fun, Gavin. I don't know what the agent decision means. You'll be working oh. with me for the rest of the project. You don't need to come back to our board. Um, you work, you'll work directly with Bruce to get everything in place to move forward. Okay, so thank you very much. So you'll have a permit and you'll work with her directly and you don't need to come back. You don't have okay, to thank you. Us anymore. Thanks, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> All right, take care. Take care. All right, moving on to the new application we received, number two, as of right determination for Andrew's boss, Forrester, owner, oh goodness, <laughs> uh, Bershard, Bershard, uh, LLC, Road A1 zone, map 095, block 24, lot 65. Ruth? Okay, I saw, are you Mr. K? I I see. Uh, I'm, I'm Andrew Walker, Forrester. 
Well, it says it says Amy. <laughs> yeah, I, I apologize. That's my wife's computer. I don't have a camera on my own computer, so. <laughs> okay, I I thought I saw Mr. K on the phone earlier on the screen earlier. He is smart. Yes. Smart there. Hi, Mark is the owner of the property. It's under a uh, Besheret LLC. Um, okay. All right. So. This is um, as of right determination request for timber harvesting um, on Winkler Road. There's a uh, diagram that shows whereabouts on Winkler Road this is. Um, there's going to be um, a contractor selected after a bidding process. And um, Andrew, if you'd like to just walk through the sequence. Sure. Uh, good evening, folks. My name is Andrew Bossy. I'm a consulting forester working on the project. Um, it involves about 25 acres on Winkler Road. Um, it's the location. It's just a little south of the airport, I guess, and uh, uh, on the east side of the road. Um, the property was logged it appears about 25 years ago i would guess from my estimation um i'm not sure if it was part of a larger project with the uh, um with the surrounding properties but um in any event um and this is exactly this is a copy of the plan i submitted and there's the map um showing the uh, uh the property and the um, um the staging area would be located up on the northwest corner, which is actually the driest soil type on the whole property. Um, the whole property is very flat. There's very little topography. Um, there's a copy of the soil map I included with the uh, with the cutting plan. Um, if you look back to the uh, the harvest map, the the main logging trail actually would follow an existing old trail, which sort of head southeast and then uh, back north. Um, that's exactly right on the uh, on the property. And that's to avoid, um, on the soil map, there's like a narrow strip of a, a wetter soil down the middle of the property on the dark blue polygon. Um, the light blue area is technically considered wetlands, but it's actually not very wet. Um, one of the conditions for whoever does the project will be that it has to be done when it's either frozen or, or dry, like we had this past summer. Um, the other soils on the property are, are fairly dry, the yellow and the uh, and the red polygons. Um, other than that, I mean, it's pretty standard logging operation. Um, when it's all done, um, I'm gonna require that the, uh, the, the trails are regraded. Um, and the contractor is going to have to provide me with some conservation grass seed mix and I'll seed down the, uh, the main logging trails on the property. I am requiring that they install an anti-tracking pad at the entrance for the trucks to come in and out. Um, mainly just so we have a nice stable area for the trucks and they're not tracking any um, soil out on the road for, uh, you know, erosion mitigation purposes. Um, I mean, that's about it. Like I said, it's a fairly simple, straightforward logging operation. And uh, um, we haven't, we're in the, just started actually the uh, the timber sale process. So I, uh, we haven't determined who's actually gonna do the job. Um, it's sort of like an auction. So it's uh, something that we hope to have in place within the next month or so, as far as a contract. And then uh, you know, we'll be planning from there. Okay. I have a couple of questions. Go ahead, Rick. Uh, any vernal pools on that property? Um, yes, there actually is one, at, um, at least one, I should say, in that dark blue soil type that was shown on the soil map. Um, the one that sticks out in my mind, it's located in that area right along the northern boundary. Um, 
Incidentally, I don't have any plan to cross that darker soil type that's shown on the soil map because um, that is the wetter soil and there's really not much for timber in that narrow band. Uh, so the main trail is going to kind of loop around and, and uh, down to the southern boundary and then back up on the eastern side just to avoid that area. Um, well, but yeah, there is a... With, with, with what I've seen, uh, at once the equipment gets in there, everything changes. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean. Well, I see some messes that the loggers have left in other parts of our town here. Mm -hmm. And it still is one quite visible off of Rye Street. And uh, uh, it all sounds good on paper and, and uh, verbal, but they make a mess. And that clear, another question I have is that clear cutting? on two acres in the front? Um, there's a potential for that. The owner asked me to look into it with a contractor. He was interested in uh, clear cutting a two acre area for his own personal use for, I guess, like fruit trees and things like that and a garden and whatnot. Um, yeah. I mean, he might be able to address that a little more specifically, but- um, Likely story. It's located up in the- uh, the northwest corner on the on the drier soil type and it's actually listed on right the, front, uh, right on Winkler Road yes right right yep and uh, that particular soil type was listed as like a prime farmland type of soil so yep. that was the uh, the obvious location for anything agricultural related <clears throat> yeah that's all I have thank you I have a question. How heavy duty are the trucks that are going to be going in and out of there? The logging trucks? Yeah. Um, I would imagine there would at least be like the triaxle type log trucks. Um, there's a chance. It, it depends on the contractor, really, so I can't say for sure, but there's a chance it might be uh, uh, trailer, flatbed trailers. Okay, because I was following up on the previous gentleman and, uh, you know, as opposed to uh, a lot of logging uh, roads tend to uh, rip things up. Um, well, I can't really, I mean, address that now. I mean, it, it's, I'm trying to take steps to avoid any, you know, issues with the road or anything like that um, with the anti-tracking pad and making sure that's installed properly. Yeah, um, you did avoid the wetland too, so it sounds like you have. Any other questions? Uh, yeah, I have a question, or a couple questions, and I'm curious, how many trees approximately is 109,000 board feet? Um, I could tell you exactly in this case. Um, just a little over 500 trees. Like, um, do you have like an estimation of, of what percentage of trees that is on that, that uh, parcel? Um, off the top of my head, no. Um, I would say, I mean, I could probably get a more precise figure if I was to do like a, a an inventory of the property. Um, but I would guess in terms of number of trees, it's probably, you know, 20, 25% of the total. And that 25%, does that include the two acre clear cut or is that just generally the 109,000 board feet? I, I would say just generally. Generally, so it would be then more if it was the two two acre clear cut. Um, yeah, slightly more based, you know, based on whatever the uh, like the average number of trees per acre is on the property. Yeah, that area that's uh, proposed for a potential clear cut. I, I mean, I guess that would matter. I mean, it would. I think it. When I was reading the report. It was going to be based on whether or not it was. Uh, 
saleable trees in that area enough of them to make it worthwhile? Um, not so much that. I think it just depends on the cost and whether or not the owner is interested in, in um, incurring that cost to do it versus the income generated off the timber. I, I think you heard from some of the other members uh, some level of skepticism about uh, the uh, how impactful it might, you know, a, 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 any uh, logging operation might be. Um, I, I know myself, I, I, I'm always curious to, to see, you know, I guess prior what it looks like and afterwards what it looks like. I think for us, it would be helpful uh, in these, when we see these that we kind of, I think, get a little bit more education about, um, you know, what best practices actually mean and, and, and then actually see them being used. Would you be against uh, some of us or one of us or um, to, to, to come out and give us a look around and kind of show us uh, a little bit of what's planned and then certainly you know it says that you would obviously let us know when it's going on that we'd be able to kind of check in on the place every now and then during the operations obviously you know with your accompaniment and whatnot. Um, so we're not getting run over by log skitters and whatnot. Yeah, I mean, I would be happy to take you around and show you when the job's going on. Um, I guess with the permission of the landowner, of course, as long as he doesn't have any issues. But yeah, I wouldn't have a problem with that at all. He's he's nodding that he's okay with that. Yeah, absolutely, Alan. And, and just philosophically, and I know I haven't spoken much, um, one of the things Andrew and I spoke extensively about in looking at the property for logging um, was to effectively help clear out um, growth for some of the existing trees. So we were not aggressive at all um, in looking at the number of trees that we're looking to adjust for this logging operation. Um, it's very important to me that, you know, this is sustainable long-term silviculture. This is not necessarily just about, um, this is not at all about generating income, um, but I think doing what is, is sustainable over the long term. Um, that's very important to me. And that's why, you know, to Andrew's comment around 25-ish percent of the trees um, was really, you know, what we felt felt about right um, to maintain the character and the structure of the underlying land. Um, and that was important to me. I, 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 I guess I'd have to say, I don't see this as necessarily a bad thing. You know, when done correctly, it's actually I'd probably a good thing. I would also want to point out, and I think what maybe what others are also feeling is this area is part of a larger, um, highly, uh, productive wetlands complex. Um, and that's seen a lot of development pressure in the last uh, 10 years or so. so we, we do get a little bit, a little bit concerned in this area. Um, but I mean, if it's done right, I think it is a positive. Yeah. And I would be very comfortable again during the operation if you need to come and take a look. I've got every confidence that we'll do it in the right way. Um, that's a priority for me, obviously. That is definitely reassuring to hear, and I'm glad that you guys are willing to have one or some of us come out and just take a look um, because we have had concerns elsewhere in town. Um, so, um, any other comments from the board? Yep. Okay. Uh, is it mostly oak trees you're taking? Um, it's a mix, but the, I would say I think it's oak and uh, pine. A mix of oak and pine, <laughs> primarily, and some red maple. And maple. Red maple. Yep. Yep. So this would be like a fire, mostly firewood harvest, or? No, there's some saw timber, but also um, some cull trees marked for, for like either pulp or, or firewood, um, just as part of the management. Okay, uh, my turn. Yeah. Okay, uh, I heard a certain area here in the southern end of town that looks absolutely like a war zone. Uh, these particular people, I think they hauled the trees in and then they trimmed them the size on the landing and just left all the mess right there next to the road. Is there any possibility of trimming your logs basically for the length you need it out in the woods and bring them up to the landing, basically ready to 
either cut in half or go on the truck and not do all the trimming and cut the butts and, and leave nothing but a big mess for one thing. And the other comment I would have to say is if you can do this when the ground is frozen, I think you would be way ahead of the game as opposed to hoping it's going to dry out enough again. And the other comment is any of the logging trucks are only going to back in off the road anyway. They're not, I'm sure they're not going to drive down into the uh, forestry area themselves because uh, I don't think uh, they'd be too happy if they did. Their level will be permanently there. Um, yeah, that's exactly right. As far as the trucks, they're going to be backing in off of Winkler Road and then the egressing, you know, straight out onto the road. Um, as far as your first point, I think it would depend on the, the type of harvest equipment that's going to be used. Um, and again, I'm not sure who the contractor is going to be yet, so it'll it'll depend, uh, uh, you know, on what what they use for equipment, whether or not they have, you know, if they're totally mechanized and they have cut the length type of equipment, um, or just with a log skidder. But I don't think it would be too much of an issue to clean up any of the chunks and debris, particularly um, in that area around the staging area, um, just because that's what Mark had intended to use for his, uh, his agricultural plot, I guess. And, uh, um, and I, as far as these other jobs you keep mentioning, I really can't address that. I've never, you know, I don't know who, who did it, who was involved. It certainly wasn't me. Um, I've never, this is the first project I've been involved with in East Windsor. Um, I live in New Hartford. I do a lot of work up in Litchfield County and, uh, you know, feel free to call the Department of uh, Energy Environmental Protection and ask about. Um, they're, I'm well known to them and uh, enjoy a pretty good reputation as far as uh, being a consulting forester. Um, I do work. I'm currently working on a project for the city of Torrington. So um, I'm used to having a lot of I guess oversight from you know municipalities and uh, never had an issue so and hopefully you won't have any here either sounds good all right if there's any other questions from the board um we can take a motion what do we need to make this an as of right motion uh that's yes ruth I believe so. I'm not aware that there's a hold period because you typically wouldn't hold a hearing or deem significance on right. that. So, yep. So, Dick, we just need a motion to approve the um, or accept the as of right determination. Um, I'll make a motion to accept the as of right determination, Andrew Bossy, Forester Owner. Sheet LLC, Winkler Road, A1 zone map 095, block 24, lot 065. I'll second it. Any further discussion? All of those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. All of us are in favor. Great. Thank you. Yep. Thank you guys for coming tonight. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Ruth, I'll be in touch as things progress. Okay. Thanks so much. All right. Thank you. Have a good Bye. evening. You too. All right. And then our final application we received is 15-2020 uh, for Warehouse Point Fire Department, 89 Bridge Street, East Windsor. Request for an interim permit to conduct a 40 5,400 square foot addition to the existing firehouse and parking lot B1 zone map 111 block, block 12, lot 002. Who do we have to represent that? I think I saw one of the fires. Yep, Mr. Barton is on. As am I. All right. It says Lisa, so who are you? <laughs> yeah, that's what I am. Same situation, my wife's computer, it's the one with the camera. <laughs> so, I guess the thing is the wife always has a nicer computer, right? Huh? Exactly, that's exactly it, yes. Now, uh, good evening, I'm Tim Kuhn with J.R. Weekly One Associates. 
Um, we worked with uh, Chief Barton and, and, uh, to prepare the plan for the addition at the warehouse the fire department. Um, if at all possible, I can pull up the plan on my screen just to go over the, uh, what's being proposed. So I'll try that. Somebody's got to let me do that first. Jason has to do it, right? Yep, Jason has to switch that. Is he around? Yeah. Maybe you'll take that. All right, that looks like. We can see your screen. All right. So the, the project site is down on Bridge Street. The, the Warehouse Point Fire Department currently exists there. Um, it is on the south side of Bridge Street. And as you're all probably well aware, the Blue Ditch originates at the culvert up here in the northeast corner and runs along the east side of the property uh, down toward the south. Um, there's currently a concrete pad out on the east side of the firehouse and the parking lot is back here. Um, what is being proposed is a building addition. Oh, I went a little too far. So they're proposing a 5,400 square foot addition to the firehouse. They'll be expanding the paved area out in front of the addition and we'll be adding some and adding and relocating some parking off here to the east. Um, currently all the runoff from this site, as you could imagine, runs into the Blue Ditch um, and it's currently running in there untreated. Uh, we would be looking to pick up the runoff via sheet flow because we really don't have elevation to put any drainage structures in. So we're gonna sheet flow it down to a, a riprap swale and into a stormwater treatment basin which will have a weir outlet structure. So that'll, that's been sized in accordance with uh, Connecticut water quality standards to provide treatment for the contributing area prior to discharge to the Blue Ditch. The entire site essentially is located within the regulated area. So all the activity is considered regulated activity. However, with regard to direct wetland impacts, the only direct wetland impact we have is right at the outlet so that we can uh, bring the, uh, the riprap from our outlet and that, that swale right down to the elevation of the, of the blue ditch. So we're not running over the top of the slope and creating an erosion issue. So there's just a little bit of wetland, direct wetland disturbance at that location. Okay. So otherwise, um, we're just on for receipt tonight. Um, we would expect that uh, we would be heard at uh, a following meeting after uh, ample time for the uh, town staff to uh, review and comment on the plans. And if you have any questions at this time, I'd be happy to answer them. Yeah, Dick. Uh, one thing, Tim, uh, isn't, isn't that some of the Blue Ditch area, some of the area that they want to uh, not retain the water, but they want to get it into the river and get it gone because that's going to affect the uh, flooding if you don't. Um, or would you be better, in other words, to get in the blue ditch and bye bye? It, it, the, the issue with that, Dick, and I know that, uh, that they're doing a study for uh, to change the zone there and deal with the runoff there. Gonna, there are some. Uh, changes to the zoning regulations in the works for that. However, the, I not, typically, yes, I would agree with you that being this close to the Connecticut River, um, the idea would get the water to the Connecticut River as soon as possible. However, in this particular case, uh, there are a couple of culverts where the Blue Ditch crosses uh, the next street down to the south and then one beyond that, which I believe are restrictions. So if we don't maintain at this location, it could, that one restriction at that culvert could create a backup, which wouldn't necessarily create more flooding downstream, but could create a little more flooding at our location. So that's why we're proposing detention here. 
Yeah, and I think it would create more flooding in the backs of the houses that are along the back of that uh, next drainage area or the rest of the blue ditch there on Maple. Yeah, if those uh, culverts downstream were suitably sized, then yes, let it go and let it get out of there because that way, because the flooding in this area typically is what backs up from the river, not necessarily what what's created from the flow from warehouse point. Yeah, I've sat through about, I'd say, 30 hours of those talks about the warehouse point drainage study yeah. and, and seen the maps about 40 times now, I think. And, and I, when I looked at this, I was thinking, it's, man, it's all a matter of timing because if, if the, you know, they're proposing that you should, to handle the runoff in this area and the increase in impervious cover, uh, you know, that would go along with any, you know, desired proposed development that we would be, you know, creating basically ponds in, or th basically three ponds, uh, one right behind this, this site, basically starting, you know, behind the next property up to Spring Street, and then another one from Spring Street to Holcomb, and then uh, I, I don't, I think there's another one later on, but I'm not 100% sure, but, but anyway, if those were there, then this could be handled, but since they're not there, and the way that that pipe is in Spring Street is actually three quarters tilted in. Um, this is absolutely necessary. But boy, is it tight. But it does fit, and I will point out that we actually do still meet the impervious coverage requirement limitations for this zone. Yeah, I mean, I I, I think that it's. I agree that you need this here. You need you need that pond there. Um, yeah. to, to handle it, but um, it, it, it would be, it is unfortunate that this other work didn't have time to potentially flourish because of other development, because then it, then it would change the site. Yes. Well, the other benefit is it does provide treatment as well. Yeah, I know that was my first question here, because I know that it, um, we're not doing much now, so this definitely improves the site. Um, are there any catch basins within the parking lot area? I don't see any, so I just wanted to confirm that I'm seeing that correctly. No, there are not. Currently at the site, there is one catch basin located here in the back of the concrete pad, which is where the building is going to go. So that catch basin is going to go away. All the parking lots, everything to the front, everything pretty much heat flows across the parking lot and back either to this catch basin or directly to the blue ditch right now. Okay. Well, I mean, all we got here is a plan. We don't have any comments from Lenny or any of that stuff. So I guess all that's going to come next month. So I guess I'll have more questions maybe then. But. Yeah, this is just to receive the application. Um, yeah, I mean, you guys have all of your ducks in a row as usual. Um, so. I think if there is any other questions to the board, we can take those. If not, we can make a motion to receive the application tonight. No comments. I'll make a motion. Make a motion to uh, receive the application uh, number 15 2020 from the Warehouse Point Fire District. Second. I'll second it. I need Alan second it first. So we'll go with Alan. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. I heard everybody in that one. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you guys. Have a good day. All right. We have no public hearings, no continued public hearings. Um, we need to, for new business, renew our 2021 meeting dates. Um, hey, did I see those dates? Am I missing those? No. Well, they were. Nobody Six. has any problems with it. Uh, I'll make a motion to accept the list of the proposed meeting dates for the year 2021 as listed. Second. I didn't see them. I don't see them either. <laughs> I sent them out the first packet. I don't have them. Okay. Uh, would you like to leave it till next time? No, I mean, I'm fine. I mean, it's the first. It's your regular Wednesdays. It's seven. I mean, 
Alan, if you're good to go yeah, on I'm, the first I'm fine. one. We can always move things if we need to. Yeah, I mean, I'm totally fine. So Dick made the motion. Was there a second? Yes. All right. Rick. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, cool. Thanks, Peg. Yeah. Uh, there's no old business. Um, we do have, we skipped over the miscellaneous, but we do have some agent review and decisions that were made. So, Ruth, I will let you take it away on application 13 2020. Okay. Um, this is an application that came into the office from uh, Dan Donahue to put a uh, pool deck on an existing uh, above ground pool. The deck is going in, in uh, an upland review area. Um, I don't foresee any impact to the wetlands on the property and um, that looked good to go. Yeah, I think for the most part behind their house over there um, on Rollercut is is just wet. Um, certainly during the wet season, it, it is wet, but during the dry season, you won't know that there's anything there. Um, and I definitely know that area, so I don't see any any issues with this moving forward. So I'd open it up to the board for any discussion if there's any concern. Could be not there. It's kind of a sand knoll by the house. The water table shallow, but uh, the real water, the wet area is out oh, 100, 150 feet behind the house. Yeah. Before it really gets wet. And I did a lot of site work in that area, including that house. So I've been there. Mm -hmm. well, I love having you and Rich on here. You guys, between the two of you, you know, the history of every lot we deal with. They built the town. <laughs> you want to see my asphalt file? <laughs> the that's in the bureau, the big sack. As long as you have my septic system in there somewhere, I'm fine. <laughs> you know what? I didn't do yours. <laughs> um. Okay, yeah, so you're, you're good to keep moving on that one, Ruth. Was there anything else that okay. you uh, No, not for, not for uh, decisions, nope. Okay, um, we don't have any status reports, so on to violations for the first one is Golden Gavel, which we've been, has been on past agendas, so I'm assuming we have an update for that one? I do. Um, they actually have completed the removal of that demolition debris that went down the embankment and um, kind of regraded the area and have hate it. So they've they made good progress on that. And they just finished up today, actually. Okay, so will the letter go out to them saying that they've done everything correctly, that there's no longer a violation on them? Yes. Okay. I'll do that. Um, I'm gonna just write that down. Okay, so then the items that I had added, there's a couple. Um, one is I did send a notice of violation out on 8 Craftsman Road. Um, I became aware of the situation out there um, through the Water Pollution Control Authority. There was a, a swale in the back um, where the town has a right of way um, that washed out. Like it's heavily eroded and it exposed the electrical conduit to the pad mount transformer. And when you see the PVC conduit to the, the uh, pad mount transformer that services the pump station out there. Um, and so there was a lot of discussion about who was responsible for um, remediating that area. Um, the town did put in uh, hay bales within the, the um, the ditch or swale kind of looks more like a ditch right now. Um, and so I issued the letter to the property owner and property manager to see if I could get some repairs done um, that way. Okay. Um, so that's what the status of that one is. The other one is, it was something you had brought up to me, Rebecca, but um, I had gone out a couple, drive by a couple of times and had gone out and thought I took pictures until I got back to look at my phone. Um, it's an area behind Baggett's nursery, right? It looked like there had been some clearing and filling back there. Um, we got a phone call 
this morning that someone had witnessed trucks coming and going and appeared to be dumping back there. So I, I did go out there and get quite a few pictures. Um, a, a very large area. I would say that they have been filling back there well over a year. It's a, it's a big, um, as I kind of measured off the area with the GIS, it's, it could be a half to three quarters of an acre of area in the floodplain that looks to have been um, built. I have a enforcement order drafted and uh, the town planner has looked at it. So it's ready to go out tomorrow morning. Uh, and it's a cease and restore. The one thing I wanted to bring up at this meeting is that if I issue an order, then we're obligated to have a hearing within 10 calendar days of when the owner would receive that order. Okay. So I just wanted to kind of alert. Uh, is that the Balch the... properties? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we've had problems before there. I've seen some of the files. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, just as you started to think about what that meant, <laughs> like, is that Thanksgiving? <laughs> what, you know, like, at the receipt of it, but, um, you know, it's set to go out tomorrow. I think the sooner the better. Um, so roughly, like, Wednesday the 18th for a potential public hearing? Which would be... If I... If I if it goes in the mail tomorrow, we have to get the, the signature card back, right? To get proof oh, that yeah. it was received. So it could push out a bit. So then that would be the day before Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. um, I can do that. I mean, I can certainly do that if, if that's an option. Um, Dick and Rick and Kurt, how are you guys available? I can also check with Jamie after this meeting too. As long as you call me, let me know. Okay. We uh, emails don't work. Yep. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. You need my help from there. Okay. Great. Then yeah, Ruth, move forward with that. And okay. So let us know when we get that received part, and we can get um, all of the the public hearing notices out uh, to get that in order. Okay. Good. Okay, those were the three items I added there. Um, just one other question that I had called out to you um, was over kind of back the, across from Kevin's property. I did reach out um, to Merrick about that. I need to uh, set up a site inspection with Kirk, which is his dad, right? Um, because they're up for renewal out there as well. Okay. So I like to tie the two together that I'm out there doing business and, you know, walk me around and show me because I, I had a, and I've been asked to look at some potential encroachment. Okay. So just to give an update to the rest of the group, I was out on the Skinnick River State Park Trail last weekend um, and noticed that across the river on Kemet's side was basically this dirt road leading down to the river and because the river is so low right now it's it's not an issue but when we get high water that whole area is is usually underwater so um i had brought that up to ruth so she's looking into it and hopefully we'll hear back more for the next meeting i actually um walked to that today at, at lunchtime because somebody pointed out that there was something up there and i did take a couple pictures and so okay. yeah i was wondering i was going to bring it up be, uh, because um uh, Obviously, I don't know if they have a permit or not, or if that's part of the, you know, permit for their excavation company or whatever, but it certainly at the very least needs erosion control. Um, but if there's no permit, then again, it'll be a cease and correct or something. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So, um, yeah, I had, I had also taken pictures out and sent those through when I had reported the issue. It'd be nice to see the pictures. Yeah, I mean, okay. my pictures were, when I looked at them afterwards, they didn't seem to be the greatest, but I can yeah. get more uh, just by, I need to walk that trail to get off the COVID, so, you know. Yeah, they're running some trees, so the pictures aren't super clear, um, but really what it is, it's just a, a dirt road to me is what it looks like, uh, leading directly down to like a flat spot right along the side of the river. 
Yeah, I looked at, on the GIS and that road seems to have been there for quite some time. So it's hard. Yeah, to... that road has been there forever. And I don't know what use it ever was. Maybe originally it was an irrigation road or something. I don't know, but mm -hmm. certainly they, they've uh, improved it. Alan, if you're going to go back out, do you think we could team up? Because I wouldn't mind. Certainly, if you want to go out uh, around, you know, midday-ish tomorrow, we can do that. Sure. Or the next yeah. day, if it's better for you, whichever. Yeah. Uh, well, no, it'd be nice. Tomorrow's the long day, so <laughs> that'd be good. <laughs> okay. So break it up a little bit. So, all right. It did. I'll, I'll give you a call in the morning. Great. All right. Great. Thank you guys for looking into that. Yep. All right, so that covers violations. We have no correspondence, seminars, or trainings. Can I um, just back up for correspondence just very briefly? I did get an email. I think, Alan, you were copied on it as well um, from uh, Jim Giorgio regarding Newberry Village for Finch, Finch, Goldfinch, Fort Goldfinch, and um, one sparrow looking to get his bond released. Um, I had sent him an email a while back about making sure he stabilized the area because it was being constructed and um, he got back in touch and sent pictures where he really beefed up the erosion control and hay in excess <laughs> to make sure he got his grass to come up. And he, so I, I plan to do a site inspection out there. Um, prior to any decisions on uh, bond release. Yeah, that uh, those two sites we had, uh, we gave back a little bit of money because one of them was pretty much buttoned up. And when we were in between enforcement officers, I was going out there pretty regularly to deal with complaints and whatnot. And, and um, yeah, so let's make it sure everything is buttoned up because uh, it's like pull, it was pulling teeth. Yeah. Those things, so. He's pretty, he's kind of overdone himself. He's, he's, yeah, and he took down that uh, hazard tree that was in the back, the tree that died behind that house. Okay. That the association was upset about. Um, he got, he said he took it, took it out of there. So. I figured that was in the cards eventually and somebody was going to do it, but I think, mm -hmm. the, I think the homeowners got it the way they wanted it at that time. That's right. Do you want me to buy the house? <laughs> <laughs> Take down the tree. Yeah. All right, cool. So, okay, that's it. Um, any general board discussion? Uh, Rebecca, the, uh, the the last item, the uh, uh, Connecticut Deep uh, IWW training has been suspended based on uh, they need to make a computer upgrade and they requested that people go back to the site periodically and, and see whether they uh, they, they have it up or not, so it's uh, it's uh, I've been trying, but uh, it, it's not available yet. Okay, thanks for the update on that. Yeah, I know Jamie was giving us an update um, every couple of meetings too, and I know she's not here tonight, so um, we will check back in for the next meeting that we have. We still have the DVDs or CDs. Uh, we had the training course in the planning and zoning office, planning office. Um, that we we had watched them uh, as a as a group a number of times, but I think uh, you know while Kurt's waiting, it might be good to loan them out to him, and he can we can find him. I I, I know, and you guys <laughs> that whole they got renovation thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ask me for yeah. a file. <laughs> That's <laughs> um, you can also watch archived training sessions on the web. Okay. If you have like previous years versions of them. Uh, on the web. Yeah, I think they're worthwhile here because not that much has changed. They're just making them less goofy, probably. <laughs> Ruth, is it easy enough to find them? On the, on the web, on the deep website, yes. Yeah, they're just older ones, so it's not like you're registering for the training, but you're able to view them. So it uh, would say archived uh, training sessions or something like that? Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Sure. Any other board discussions? All right. Any public participation? Will we stop public? 
What's that, Kathy? When are we ever going to stop zooming? <laughs> no, I don't have an answer for that. <laughs> well, they managed to get through an election. I didn't see the ambulance there. <laughs> All right. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Right <laughs> have a good Thanksgiving, everybody. Yeah, you too. All you in too. Favor? Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you.